appreciate you coming. We hope you've had a good week and uh, the Lord's been good to us. Um, we still, uh, many people we need to be praying about, praying for. It is good to see Joni back with us. She had the surgery and she's doing good. Uh, but we like for you still pray for June's brother Nelson and uh, pray that you know the Lord's will be done there. Any other request? All right. In notice in the book of Luke, uh, <clears throat> in verse forty-four. And he said unto them, and this will be the twelve disciples. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And the Lord covered the whole Jewish Bible right there. All of it. The law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Now do you think that the twelve understood the scriptures after this? I would say they did. Verse 46. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. He opened their scriptures, he, our minds and their hearts to the scriptures. Notice back in the verse in chapter tw uh, 24 again, verse 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? That'd be the kingdom. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And then you find that the Lord opened their understanding to all these things. Now, I, I'm getting to a point, I want you to understand, he, he's talking about the prophets, he's talking about all the Old Testament, and then he says, back here, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now look back with me and notice, you'll find in where he's talking to them and we went over this last week in chapter 22, Luke 22, verse 37. For I say unto you that this, that this that is written must be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Now come down with me to verse there 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. Saying, Father, if thou will be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And we looked at last week what that cup was. 
And that cup was the wrath of, of God Almighty that is going to be poured out upon this world. Uh, and I, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That would be Christ. That would be God the Father and his anointed, the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. In other words, they do not want God to rule over them. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to have nothing about religion. They don't want to retain God in their knowledge. And because of that, God has given up them to a reprobate mind. And that's a junk mind. That's a mind that's useless. And they don't want nobody authority over them. That's what's going on in the world. It's not against so much people. It's against the Creator and His Son. Now He said, let us break their bands asunder, their hold, and their restraint. Now notice what He's going to do with them. Verse 4. He that sitteth in the he <clears throat> heavens shall what? Shall laugh. That's a laugh of scorn. It's like you look at something. <laughs> it's not funny to him. It's just a, it's a laugh like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all think y'all something. I'm fixing to show you something. That type of thing. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. They're not going to know which way's up or down. They're not going to know which way's north or south, east or west. They don't know which way to go. They don't know what to do. They're going to be in derision. They're going to cry one of these days. But we'll get to that. Verse 5. Then shall he speak unto them in his, what? Wrath. And vex them. Trouble them. Going to vex them. In his sore displeasure. If you think God's going to let everything just go on. One of these days, he's going to put us into it. Now he said he'd speak to them in wrath. That's that cup of wrath. Notice about this. Uh, let's go to, I don't want to go through all that. Just turn over to Revelation and look in Revelation and notice in chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, verse 15. The last book in the Bible. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said unto the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And folks, it's coming. The great day of His wrath is coming. Just as sure you can see the storm clouds, oh, come on, you know it's a coming. 
Now look at this thing about it. You want to see some things about it. Turn over with me and look. Let's go to chapter 9. I'll tell you what. Go back to chapter 8. We'll start there. Now I want you to, when you read the book of Revelation, people say, well, there's just symbols and, and allegories and all that. No, it's not. Let me tell you, the book of Revelation is to be taken literally. And if it's a symbol, the Holy Spirit will let you know in the passage that it's a symbol. Otherwise, it's, it's true. Look with me in chapter 8, verse 7. The first angel sounded. There are seven of them. And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now, come down with me to verse, I'm just not going to read all of it. Verse chapter 9, verse 1, fifth angel sounded, verse 2. Uh, he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke a locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Those would be the ones in chapter 7. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of scorpions when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, they want to want to die. They're going to be praying to die. And shall not find it, uh, and desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were a crown of gold, light gold. Their faces were uh, as the faces of men, and their hair was as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had a breastplate as were the breastplate of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of char chariots, and many horses running to battle. People say, you crazy. You believe that? I believe right now in the bottomless pit there's an army of what God calls locusts, their monstrosities. They have the face of a man, hair of a woman, teeth of a lion. I mean, folks, they're there and they're coming out on this earth when God speaks in His wrath. Now, you don't want to be here. <laughs> I guarantee you, you don't want to be here. And they had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, and in the Greek tongue he hath his name Apollyon. And one woe is past, behold, there come two woes more hereafter." Now verse 14, 
saying unto the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. They're in the bottom of the river over there. Euphrates runs through Iran or Iraq. Comes right down through. Tigers, Euphrates, all that was over there. By the way, Euphrates was the one that would come out of the Garden of Eden. So, I mean, the God, all of this stuff, that's God's, that's His land. He said He never takes His eye off of that land over there. Always a looking where Adam was at, where it all began, where He told Abraham, all as far as your eye can see, that's yours. I'm going to give it to your seed, Isaac, Jacob. The 12 tri- uh, tribes of Israel, they get the land, not you. They, them. But here's the thing. This thing's going to affect the world. If you're here, you're going to be affected by all of this. Now look what happens when these dudes come out of that ri- uh, river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which was prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Now, how many we got on this planet? Seven billion? What would be a third of that? Over two billion? That's, that's, that's a lot. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. Now how many is that? 200,000 thousand. It's innumerable. You can't number it. That's what's coming on this earth. That ain't beside, that ain't, he goes, how many, look at, come on verse, uh, verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. And them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and javen, uh, brimstone, the heads were the, of the horses were the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouth. I mean, folks, it's, it's coming. And look what happens. And the rest of the men, verse 20, which were not killed by the plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, wood, which neither can see nor hear, neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorcerers, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. I mean, it's a time, man. Come on down with me. Let's go on. Uh, let's go on over in the chapter. Uh, go to chapter twelve. Chapter twelve, right in the middle of the trib, verse seven. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out uh, with him. Uh, notice verse 11. They, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. In other words, they were killed. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And folks, there's no doubt about it, he's going to be mad, coming down with wrath. God's pouring his wrath out on this world. He's speaking to this world in wrath. He's letting loose the plagues that was on Egypt on this earth, and they're intensified. But that ain't all. Uh, Let's look at some more. Come over with me and look in chapter 16. Chapter 16. Notice what he says. <clears throat> Chapter 16, talking about the 
here we're going to pour out the vials. Verse 2, And the first went, poured out his vial upon the earth. There fell a noisome and a grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. You didn't have to have it, just worship his image. By the way, you know, you... you uh, you go back to you know, that, that mark. Look at that back in chapter 13. Verse 18. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Uh, for it is the number of a man. His number is 600, three score and six. Six, six, six. Look back up to verse, uh, let's see. Verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And now watch verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, that's one, or the name of the beast, you have his name, or the number of his name. 666. There's three things. If you got one of them, you can buy or sell. If you take it, what would you do? Now people say the body of Christ is going through tribulation. And they preach eternal security. They go through the tribulation. What would happen to a member of the body of Christ if he took the mark of the beast? Well, look back in verse 16, chapter 16. And the first went and poured out his vial upon uh, the earth, and there fell a noisome. A grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. He didn't say nothing about. Folks, if you're saved, you're saved from this time period that I'm talking to you about. But if you're not, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you will take the mark of the beast. You say, well, no, I won't. Yes, you will. And I'll show you why. But look on. Verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. Every living soul died in the sea. There was just one third back there when they turned the water of the sea and they hit the water of the blood. Here, everything goes gets worse, intensified. Third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of water. They become blood. Come down with me. Here's one I like. People talk about global warming. Look at verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had, hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. I mean, there it is. He pours it out on the sun, and it scorches them. And you know what they do? They blaspheme God. And they blame God. All, I'm reading all of this to say he's speaking to this world in wrath. And you read all of this. Look over in verse 19. Revelation 16, 19. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of His wrath. This has all been prophesied. Look back in chapter 14. In chapter 14 verse 10. 
The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. You see that? That cup is God's wrath. That cup is the wrath of his indignation. We saw last week that God is going to make the nations to drink it. Turn to Second Thessalonians and look in Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Now I'm getting to my message. Now my message ain't that long. (laughs) But in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, I want you to see this. Notice he says in verse 7, And to you who were troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Look in chapter 2. In chapter 2, look what happened. He's talking about the mystery of iniquity in verse 7. And that ain't nothing but the denominational systems of this world. He said in verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs, and lying wonders with all deceivabilityness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, for this cause, they wouldn't receive the love of the truth. And for this cause, not because they were sinners, not because they were bad or good or whatever, They did not receive the love of the truth. And he said, And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all, now how many is all? It's all. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in in unrighteousness. Now I read all of that. That time period will begin. We go the dispensation of grace we're in right now. And it's given to Paul. And God today is speaking in grace and peace. And he's offering grace and peace to this world. God today is not angry with you. If you're in here and you've never been saved, I want to tell you, God is not angry with you. He hasn't been angry with you, and He will not be angry with you as long as you're in the dispensation of grace. Now, when that ends, when this body is complete, the body of Christ is going out. It's going to be pulled up to the Lord in the clouds. Then there's going to be a man. He's going to come along. He's going to confirm a covenant with Israel for one week. A week of seven years. And that seven years is broke up in two sections. There's three and a half years, three and a half years, and then the second coming of Christ over here, and that's when he comes down to this earth in the brightness with his mighty angels, and he's going to take vengeance, he's going to consume the wicked, the Antichrist, he's going to consume him, he's going to kill him, he's going to destroy him, 
that the second coming of Christ and he's going to set up a kingdom on this earth. Now, and it'll reign over here for 1,000 years through David. This is called the tribulation period in here. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. It's a time when God today, back here today, you have the cross. And, because, and Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles and he's preaching today that Christ died for all your sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and God raised him the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ on this cross bore the wrath of God Almighty. He drank of that cup that I've been telling you about for two weeks. It's the cup of God's indignation against sin. It, he poured His wrath out against His Son in A.D. 33 for everyone in this building. Now people can mock at it. They can say, I don't believe it. But let me tell you something. One day you will face the Creator of heaven and earth. And you will get down on your knees. And you will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You will do that. You say, I won't. Yes, you will. People don't know who they're dealing with. Do you know why they don't know who they're dealing with? They never read this Bible. And when they do read it, they don't believe it. They believe it's full of fairy tales and allegories and they believe it's myths and they believe it's just stories. But let me tell you, this is God Almighty's Word. He wrote every word of it and He preserved it and you have a copy of it. And you will stand before Him and give an account of what you believe about this Bible. This is coming. This right here is the time of wrath. How's God going to speak? Psalm 2 said He's going to speak in His wrath. How's He speaking here? Grace, peace. Folks, we live in the greatest dispensation in the Bible. God today is building a body. It's called a building. That's the body of Christ. That's what He's doing today. He's not advancing no kingdom over here. Why, well, folks, He's going to set up a kingdom over here. Turn to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Now you'll go to Isaiah, you'll hit... Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and you'll run right smack into Daniel Avenue if you follow that direction right there. It's right after uh, Ezekiel. And look in Daniel chapter 2. I wish I could get people to see how easy salvation really is. Salvation is the simplest thing. I hear people talk about things that you got to jump through the hoops. Well, you got to believe Jesus Christ died for your sins, but you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to quit this. You got to quit that, or God won't receive you. You got to act a certain way, dress a certain way, do a certain thing. I mean, on and on the thing goes, or God will not receive you. Let me tell you, God will receive anybody, anywhere, anytime, based on what His Son did at Calvary for them, and not on what you do has nothing to do with what you do. You say, well, you don't know my past. I don't need to know your past. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I come from. I could care less where you come from or what you've done or what you hadn't done. I know this. I know that Jesus Christ went to that cross and He became what you are. I know that Jesus Christ bore the wrath of God against every sin that I'll ever commit, ever think about committing, ever could commit. He bore God's judgment against that sin in my behalf 
behalf and he took my place, died my death, bore my wrath that I deserve and I have life because of Calvary and not because of what I do. If you have to work for it, you're going to have to work to keep it and you're just out of luck. You know how I know that? The apostle, the greatest Christian that lived since Christ said, There dwelleth in me, that is in my flesh, no good what thing. He said, It's no more I that do these bad things, but sin that dwelleth in me. He said, I'm carnal, sold unto sin. Folks, there's no goodness about you. The Bible said there's none good, no, not what. There's not, uh, folks, we're not, uh, we might do good acts toward people. We might do good things and, and help people. That's good. But I'm talking about as far as salvation, your goodness don't get you anywhere with God. You know what does? Receiving His Son. Now you think about God sending His Son into this world. You think about them bringing Him and Him coming up, keeping the perfect manner of the law. And there He is. He goes out preaching and they hate Him. And they said, like they shook their fists, said, we'll not have this man to reign over us. And they rejected Him. And they, he turned them over to the Gentiles. And them Roman soldiers took him into the hall. And they stripped him down naked. They didn't leave no clothes on him. He was standing there naked. And they're making fun of him. And they're poking fun at him. And they are put a veil over his face. And they hit him. And, and they took a rod. And, and they beat him in the head with it. And said prophesied, tell us who done that. And God didn't lift his hand to help his son. But that ain't the half of it. They stripped him down and put him against and tied him to a pole and stretched his back so tight and I, you read about how the Romans used to scourge their prisoners. And they said they'd get the skin of the back as tight as they could get it. And then they took that cat of nine tails and they were nine strips of leather. And in the end of them uh, pieces of leather, they were bone and metal and anything they could have. And that man that would beat them and he would flip his wrist when he'd hit it and he knew how to do it and it would tear hunks of flesh out of his back. And they whipped Jesus Christ there. The Romans did and ripped his back open and and a crown of thorns on him. And that represented the curse. I want you to know God. The Bible said he was made a curse for you. And he was humiliated. And they put a robe on him. And prayed in him up around the street. And sped on him. And he's doing that for you. For you. No wonder he prayed and his sweat became great drops of blood. And he said, Father, if it be any other way, if there any other way, let this cup pass from me. He's looking at that wrath. He's looking at that indignation that God's going to have. His Father, he'd never been separated from him. He prayed in John 17. He said, Father, Restore the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. Glorify me again. And there they nailed him to that cross. And they took his clothes off again. You know how I know that? The Bible said that they cast lots for his. He's fulfilling prophecy. All of this was fulfilling what? The prophets had foretold. And he's on that cross. And the ones that's down below him are making fun of him. And finally, he cries out and says, My God, my God, 
Why hast thou forsaken me? And he gave up the ghost and he died. But that ain't, it ain't over yet. Look with me in Daniel 2. He done that for two reasons. For you and for this. Look in Daniel 2 in verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms and it shall stand how long? Forever. That's that kingdom there. But he had to die. He died as a lamb for the people that's going to get that kingdom. He died as their Passover lamb for these that's going through the tribulation. You see, Jesus Christ said, He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. They got to go through all of that. They can't take the mark of the beast. If they take the mark of the beast, they're over with. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Look with me to John. In 1 John, I, I told you John, and when I meant John, but it's 1 John. And notice what he says in 1 John. Now notice what he talks about in chapter uh, 2. Verse 18, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. That's the last times of prophecy. Not the last times of the dispensation of grace. It's the last times of prophecy. Come down to verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. So they're going to need that unction. Come down, why? Verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. There's religions today that don't believe that their God has had a Son. They're Antichrist. But look on. He said, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledged the Son hath the Father also. Come down to verse 26. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. <clears throat> it's going to be a time of people being seduced. Verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Folks, you don't have that anointing. Paul said God gave us pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints. They're going to have that anointing. What is that anointing? Well, they're going to have power. He told them to wait there until they be renewed with power. They're going to have the baptism with the Spirit. They're going to be filled with the Spirit. That's why in Mark chapter 16, he said, if you drink any deadly thing, did I not read where the waters is going to be poison? They'll be able to drink it. If any, a snake bites you, serpent, he said, you'll tread over serpents. Why? They're going to be down in the wilderness down in there. God's going to be feeding them with manna just like He did. And there'll be vipers down there and scorpions down there. It won't hurt them down there. Folks, they got that 
power. You don't have that power today and you're a fool if you pick up a rattlesnake in the name of Jesus. You say, I, <laughs> yes you are. Now if you break out snakes in here, somebody better be breaking out some pistols. Shoot that thing. Not the person. <laughs> they got power to get through those plagues and the signs. Why don't you have it? Give you the reasons. Turn with me and look. And I'm, I'm on a close. Look in Romans. Folks just believe the Bible. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. <laughs> 